Hi, I'm Melinda with Beanhoppers.com and the Opinionated Coffee Reviewer. And I'm here today to give you my honest, opinionated review on the Alicia Mocha Pot by DeLonghi. Might be good, might be bad, but either way, it's going to be honest. We're going to talk to you about the quality, how it works, what it does, and the results I've received from making multiple pots of coffee and how I liked it. So, without further ado, let's get started. The first thing I'll go over is the parts and the quality of the parts um, from the bottom up. Um, the This is the electric base, which is nice. You don't want to get this wet because it's got electric parts in there. It'll break. It's very simple and basic. It feels pretty sturdy. Uh, it's a one-touch button, so it makes it really easy. Um, we have a, a an electric base. The base of the coffee maker is made of aluminum, and it has a safety valve. And inside, it has uh, measure lines that go, uh, there's uh, lines that go up and down, and it will measure eight ounces to the top of the lines and four ounces to the bottom of the lines. Now, this also has an electric base on the bottom, so when you do wash it, you wanna be careful not to get this wet because it will short everything out and then your machine will no longer work, and that's not good. A full pot is eight ounces, and the half pot is four ounces. Onto the aluminum filter. It's a very lightweight, um, so you would be able to bend this if you were too harsh on it. It has uh, pretty large holes in the bottom of the filter basket, as, do as it does on the bottom of the top of the brewer, um, the coffee pot part. Um, so the one interesting thing about these um, large holes is it's similar to a percolator so it's going to uh, draw the water up through these big holes and the, the um, it will allow the oil to get into your coffee which is great if you love caffeine because this will give you a very big caffeine boost because all of your well, not, well your caffeine is actually um, housed in the oils of your coffee so um, you are going to get a big caffeine boost when you brew with this method. It'll also result in coffee uh, similar to a percolator in the aspect that it's going to be a little more, there's going to be sediment, it'll taste a little more grainy, um, it'll be much stronger, uh, which isn't necessarily bad. I love strong coffee, so um, when it's done right, it's very delicious. Uh, it also has a little um, filter basket, I'm not sure what to call this. Uh, when you fill this up less than full, you can put this little filter on the top of the coffee grounds. So I guess it's so it won't splash around, I'm really not exactly sure. But um, what I did find was that it created a little less sediment. So if you were to brew a half a pot, this would actually hold the coffee down and it would act as another filter before it went into the coffee pot. So that's kind of cool. Um, and then the the uh, coffee pot itself has a nice plastic handle. It's nice and sturdy. It doesn't get hot when you brew um, when you brew your batch. Um, it's got a nice uh, resin plastic um, container, and it feels really nice and sturdy. The bottom of this is aluminum, so it does get very hot. However, this doesn't get quite as hot. So that's nice, and it's got a little stem in the middle, I guess I would call it, where the coffee comes out of the bottom of this when it gets uh, hot in the bottom. And that's it for the brewer part. I wanted to mention what this coffee brewer is not. Many people think that this coffee brewer is actually an espresso maker. Uh, it's not an espresso maker in any way, shape, or form. It does not provide the pressure required to make espresso. Uh, real espresso is brewed using a fine ground coffee under 16 bars or 16 to 18 bars of pressure and it creates a 
one ounce to two ounce, so one ounce is a single shot of espresso. Espresso also is very smooth and it's not bitter and it doesn't have sediment in it. Despite the fact that it uses a similar type of um, holes for a filter, not paper, um, it doesn't have sediment in it and this does. This is more similar to percolator coffee, which is good, um, but it's not espresso. So sorry, don't call it an espresso maker because it's not, don't do that, it's not. Okay, um, now that we've established that opinion. So next we'll cover um, how I got my the best results from this coffee maker. And I did get some great results. I tried, at first I tried multiple coffees. I tried multiple grinds. Now my worst coffees were dark coffees, which um, I feel like most people would feel that they should use dark coffee in this because they think it's an espresso maker. But it, I got what I got from the dark coffee uh, was grainy, bitter, muddy, strong, too strong. It's just too much for this brewing method because you're already going to get, um, like I said, sediment, extra caffeine, and it's already going to be a little more harsh. So the strong coffee, no bueno. Didn't like it. Um, my best results were with um, a medium and a light coffee. Um, I used the Costa Rican Terra Zoo as well as the our Jungle Java, and those both turned out great. Um, and that's the coffee I used. But f the best grind that I used was actually a medium grind that's similar to my. Uh, home brewer so like my regular coffee brewer that I would use uh, paper filter in just a half click coarser than my medium grind which on my grinder happens to be six and a half your grinder is going to be totally different every grinder is different and then um, my best measurement turned out to be a full basket which is about 22 grams of coffee and eight ounces, which is a full pot of, of water. So eight ounces to 22 grams is gonna make you a strong cup of coffee for sure, coupled with a, a mesh filter, um, and uh, you're gonna get a very strong cup, And but it's, going to, it's not gonna be quite as bitter. Now, no matter what, you're gonna get some sediment in your coffee because of the filter type, but, um, that's what I found to taste the best in this brewing method. Okay, let's take a look at how to use the DeLonghi Alicia Mocha Pot. Like I said, super simple. Um, I have ground already um, fresh, uh, 22 grams of freshly ground coffee from Costa Rica. Now I've found that the Costa Rican Terrazoo has been pretty much my favorite so far in this brewing method. Um, the dark coffee I didn't like at all. So the first thing you want to do is take the top off. Like I said, this is super easy. So take the top off. You fill up the water. Oh, let me sh show you real quick. <clears throat> fill up the water to the lines. Um, now there's some lines that go up and down. You fill it to the top of the line for eight ounces, a full pot. And then to the bottom of the line for a half pot, which I don't know why anybody would want to make a half pot. That's just silly. It only brews eight ounces. So, um... However, like I did say, it does have a lot of extra caffeine, so I, if I, I can't actually finish a whole pot, um, but I do split it. So I, I'll just to show you that how many tablespoons it takes, I'm just using the regular kitchen tablespoon, and I'm gonna kinda overfill them. One, two, three, four, and... It's kind of a lot in there, but I'm just gonna take it and even it out. I'm not really tamping it down per se. I'm just evening it out so that the top goes on nicer. There we go, and can I fit any more in there? I did have a little extra. All right, so 
I set my grinder to a little over, very little over what I would use for my uh, regular grind. Um, and then, so the water's in there, coffee's in there. You set the top on it and push the button. Literally, that's it. It's super easy. Um, I have found that Okay, we'll be back. We'll be back to show you what it looks like when it's brewing. Okay, you can see that the coffee is starting to come up from the bottom and you can peek in there and see that it's coming right from that little um, center part. And when all of the coffee has come up into that the pot, the coffee pot, it'll start to make this hissing sound. And you'll see that the, it takes about one minute to fill this, the, to fill the container and hear the hissing. So that means there's no more water left in the bottom. I kind of let it do it for just a sack. And then I take it off because I don't like my coffee to continue being hot as far as um, like um, too hot because otherwise it'll start cooking and we don't like the taste of cooked coffee we like the taste of brewed coffee now I can set this right on the counter I can set this on the table it's not hot at all on the bottom and then I can just pour this directly into a cup ready to serve absolutely done and very very strong so if you want to make pot after pot unlike the stovetop version you can remove the top by holding the bottom and twisting it so the stovetop version the hot the top is um, aluminum as uh, the handle is kind of um, just a little smaller but I can still kind of touch this it's not too hot it's a little warm um, so I could remove this top uh, it's a little too hot on the bottom can't touch it but I don't mind setting it on the counter and then what I would do to brew a, a pot another pot right away without burning myself kind of touching it from the bottom is so here's how I do it I take a cup that's uh, just a, cup, a regular coffee cup and I put the filter, throw the hot filter in there and I take the bottom chamber and I rinse it with cold water because it's aluminum. Aluminum cools off very quickly. Think about tin foil, right? It's very cool to the touch very quickly. So I put cold water in there. Just for a brief few times, switch it around. It's already, already now. It's totally cool. And I can um, brew another pot immediately. Um, then what I do is I carefully, because this is still a little hot, but because I put that in there, all the coffee just falls out into the bottom of the cup. It's not that hot, not too hot. And then I rinse that with cold water. And I'm ready to brew another cup. What I like to do is um, wipe out the um, oils from the previous batch so that they don't get into the new batch because it make it could make it a little bit better. So there. you can do the same thing with the top. You can just dump it out and rinse rinse it out and do it all over again. And so you're ready. Uh, this also does, this also has a keep warm feature. Like I said, though, I don't like to keep my coffee warm because it continues to brew. Um, so I wouldn't recommend using it, but you can. Um, you turn it back on after you've poured your. So there you go. That's our demo of the mocha pot, and that's a wrap. So I hope this video was helpful, informative, and opinionated. Because, and don't forget to subscribe to my station for more opinionated coffee reviews. And if you need great coffee to put into your new brewer, 
you can come by beanhoppers.com and pick up a bag or subscribe to our service. And I've also provided you with a link below if you want to buy this on Amazon. It's available. I think it's about $50. Really cheap. Um, and swing by and let me know how you like the video. I'll see you later.